Hey there Dev Squad, Furtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up your leap ability for your mech character. Once again, this is going to be one of your special attacks. The leap ability is going to throw your character in the air and launching itself towards an enemy or wherever it is that you are looking. So as you can see here, when I press free on my keyboard, he's gonna jump in the air and do a single hammer hit. That's what we're gonna be setting up in today's video. So we'll be covering the code to get you to launch and we're also gonna be setting up the animation blueprint as well. And then when it comes to damage, that's gonna be something that we'll be covering once we finally finished all of our special attacks. And this is the last one. So you'll see that happening real soon. But for now guys, let's go ahead and dive straight into Unreal Engine and get started. So now that we're inside of Unreal Engine, we can start working on the code to get us to leap in the air. So what I'm gonna do is open up my test map if you haven't got it open already. Once we're in there, what we're gonna be doing is setting up the input within the third person character telling it to check to see if they're already attacking and if they're not then we're going to tell it to jump into the air and the way that we're going to do this is by using an impulse it's really cool and i'm sure you guys will find it quite interesting as well the way that we're doing this so open up your third person character blueprint to find it go to third person bp blueprints and then third person character give it a couple of seconds to load up and then what we're gonna do is find some empty space underneath our other two special attacks. So I'm gonna go down here and then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna use the keyboard event for free. You can also use any other key binding for this special attack, it's entirely up to you. But as you can see for our other abilities, number one is our whirlwind, number two is our helicopter attack, and then number three intuitively is going to be our leap. So going in from here, what we're going to do is start off by running a branch check. And this branch check is just going to see if they've got enough attack energy to use this leap ability. So what I'm going to do with this branch is simply float greater than or equal to the value 2. This is how much energy it's going to cost to leap. So your B should be 2 and then your A should be a reference to your attack energy. So get a reference to that and hook it up to your A. From there, what we're gonna be doing, if they've got enough energy, is running a branch check to see whether or not they are already attacking. So do that, get another branch, and then just hook up your already attacking Boolean into the condition. If they are already attacking, do nothing. If they aren't, that's where we are gonna be setting the attack energy down to float minus float and all we're doing is just attack energy minus two. Two is the cost of that ability. So once we've done that what we're going to be doing from here is we are going to be adding a variable and we're going to be calling this leap active and then with this leap active after we've set that energy we are going to be setting leap active to true and then we're also going to be getting our already attacking and we're also going to be setting it to true so the engine knows that a we are leaping and b that we're attacking and they shouldn't be able to do anything else what we're going to be doing from here is we are going to be adding an impulse and then a force and this is just going to allow us to launch that character over in the air. We don't want it to just be a normal jump, we need them to be going forwards and quickly. So let's go ahead and do just that. So what we're going to be doing is adding an impulse. So add impulse and make sure this impulse is coming from the character movement component. So what you should have should look like this. Within here we should have velocity change, make sure this is ticked. And then your impulse, this is where we now need to get the forward vector from, from the character. So we know which direction they're facing, so we know which direction to shoot them forwards. So the way that we're going to do this is get forward vector 
And then for the in rotation for this, all we're going to be doing is getting character or getting actor rotation and just hook it up into here. The target is going to be itself. And then with this, all we're going to be doing is vector multiplied by vector. So let's take a look at this. So vector multiplied by vector, make sure you're using the right thing. So what you should have here is vector multiplied by vector, and then that should go into your impulse. Now we want to move it forwards on two of these values. So what we're gonna do is set our X and our Y to 1000. And because we're only multiplying the forward vector, it doesn't matter that we've got them both set there. It's just going to take whatever value it is at the moment and then just launch it forwards. Um, you're going to be able to see this come into play as we dive into this. So moving on from there, after we've added our impulse, we're also going to be adding in a force. So drag out from your character component and add a force. And then with our force, you want to set that equal to the values that we've just created for our forward vector to get, you know, the location and sort of where it should be heading. So that should be all good. Then what we're doing is instead of just one large impulse, we're going to be doing two. And the reason for that is just so it's a little bit smoother instead of just one huge hit at once. So what I'm actually going to do is copy my add impulse and add force, and I'm going to paste them. Hook up your targets. And essentially all we're doing here is just running two impulses. Just hook up all of your references to the impulse and the force to that same node there. And then with that, we are all good to go. Sorry, no, you don't want to do that. Break those links there. For the second one, all we're doing is adding height. So with this, you want to add height equal to about 600 on the Z. So you can make it smooth if you want to by adding multiple impulses. Um, but what you do need to do with that is you also need to make sure you add height as well. Um, but for now, I'm just going to be doing just this. Once that has done, we are going to be running a delay of one second. This one second is going to be the time that it's going to be throwing the player in the air for. After the delay duration of one second, all we're going to be doing is simply setting our leap active to untrue and also our already attacking to untrue so we can then go and use other abilities. So what I'm going to do is just take a moment to go through all of my code so you can see exactly what I've done here. So as you can see this attack is a little bit more complex than what we've set up before but I'm just going to go through this nice and quick. So starting off it's going to check to see if you've got enough energy to use it. If you do, then it's going to check to see if they're already attacking. And if they're not attacking, then we're going to be taking away some attack energy. And then we're going to be setting leap active and already attacking to true. So the engine knows to play the animation and not to play any other special attacks. And then just add an impulse to throw them on their forward vector. And then another impulse to throw them up in the air. So they're not, so you know, they come off the ground a little bit. And then after a second, we are just setting these values for already attacking and leap active to untrue. So they can then go ahead and use another attack. So if that's all set up and looks exactly the same as me, select all of this, press C to comment on it, and then just simply give it the name leap attack. And once again, I'm just using this comment box to make sure that our code is nice and clean and we can find it easy later on. So that's all done. If we go ahead and press play, we can take a look at how this is going to look. So if I press free, you can see it's going to launch me forward. So that is essentially our leap. But what we don't have at the moment is any animation for it. And that's exactly what we're going to set up. So let's go ahead and open up our animation blueprint. Go to Mech Combat, Meshes, Main Character, and open up your Mech underscore NMBP. Give it a couple of seconds, and then within here, what we're going to be doing is adding in a leap state. So from Idle and Walk Run, 
What we're going to be doing is going above attacking and adding the state with the name leap. And then with the leap, we want them to be able to go to it from either idle and also from walk run as well. So make sure you got those transitional rules there. And we also want to be able to go back from either of those. So go from leap to walk run and from leap to idle as well. Within our leap, what we're going to be doing is essentially just a blending between two different animations to create this. So the first animation we're going to be using is our jump air. So bring this in from your asset browser. And then we're also going to be using our default attack and we're going to be merging these to make him jump and swing his hammer at the same time. And once again, the way that we're blending these is by using the layer blend per bone node. Base pose is going to be your jump. Your blend pose is going to be your attack. Your blend weight should be one. And then if you open up your details panel for your layered blend per bone node, create a element. And with this, set your bone name to torso. That is the bone at which we are merging these animations. And set your blend depth to one. Go ahead and hit compile. Join these up and what you should have is a bunch of warnings saying that it's not going to be going into the leap state. So we need to set this up. So going from idle to leap, open this up. And for this, we are going to need the variable for leap. So we need to access that from the third person character. So go into your event graph. And then as third person character, we are going to be dragging out, getting a reference to get leap active. And then with leap active, promote this to a variable and we're going to call this leap active. And then just drag it up and use it just like that. Perfect. And hit compile. So now we can use this as part of our transitional rules. So within idle to leap, simply hook up leap active. And then from our walk run to leap, if you open up that transitional rule, it's also just going to be your leap active. And now going back into our state machine, we now need to set up going from leap to idle. So let's set that up. Find the transitional rule. It should say leap to idle. And within here, we're going to be setting up a bit of code. So get our reference to leap active. So what we need is the not boolean. So if leap active is not true and the speed is less than 10, so get your speed and then you want to get float less than 10, then you want to tell it to go into this. So less than 10 and then between this, you want to use the and boolean. So what you should have at the end of this is code that looks just like this. Go ahead and copy all of this, hit compile and that should get rid of another one of your warnings. With this copied, we are then going to go from leap to walk and run. So make sure you find that and then just paste in your code. Instead of less than 10, this time all we're doing is float greater than 10. And the reason why I've swapped this is because you only want it to go into the walk run state if your speed is greater than 10. Otherwise you want it to go into your idle state. So what you want to do is just make sure your code looks exactly like this. So we're just making sure that both the speed is greater than 10 and leap active is not true. Go ahead and hit compile. You should have no more warnings. And if we press play, we can jump into the game, press free, and you are going to notice it is going to swing that hammer and it is going to do that leap. So it's doing that little jump there. So we are all good. So that is pretty much everything for our leap attack. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And next up, we are going to be moving on to getting these different attacks to deal damage based on the attack they've used. For now, guys, once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating your boy Virtus. Signing out.
This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.